One day, you're walking down the street, wearing a mask connected to an oxygen tank. There are no clouds in the sky. There have been no clouds anywhere in the world for several months. You notice a girl who is having trouble breathing. You let her borrow your mask so that she can breathe. Then someone screams, take cover! Now there's a loud whistle, and you see some kind of invisible force tearing trees out of the ground and pushing away parked cars. You hide in the nearest house. A strong icy wind sweeps past. All the strange changes in this world are caused by the atmosphere that is turned upside down. So, to understand what would happen if Earth's atmosphere changed so dramatically, we must first understand what an atmosphere is. In simple words, this is a blanket of air covering our planet. It warms us, protects us, and allows us to breathe. The atmosphere has five main layers – troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and exosphere. The troposphere is the heaviest. About 80% of the total mass of the atmosphere is here. Clouds, dust, and water particles fly in this first layer. It's filled with more oxygen than the other layers and exerts the strongest atmospheric pressure on us. The fact is that all the air around us has weight. At ground level, it's roughly 15 pounds per square inch. It envelops all material objects, but we don't feel 15 pounds per square inch, or PSI, because our internal pressure is equal to that. The air is dispersed in the atmosphere and on the ground. The higher we go, the lower the atmospheric pressure and oxygen levels are. For example, climbers, while ascending a high mountain, use oxygen tanks to help their bodies adapt to the changes in the air. There's artificial pressure inside airplanes to make people feel comfortable during takeoff, landing, and the entire flight. So, the most saturated and, at the same time, the heaviest air is in the first layer. But in an inverted atmosphere, it would be the farthest one from us. The next layer is the stratosphere, and it performs the function of a shield. The stratosphere consists of ozone, which absorbs most of the solar radiation and prevents it from reaching the ground. In simple words, the sun's rays are filtered through the stratosphere. They lose their harmful properties, and our planet receives safe heat. Then the mesosphere comes. You can experience the lowest temperatures in the world in this layer. Atmospheric pressure is low here, but the air is dense enough to burn meteorites passing through the mesosphere. The thermosphere follows the mesosphere. It takes a hot blow from the sun's rays. The temperature here is about 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit almost one and a half times higher than in a volcano. And the final layer is the exosphere. This is the last frontier of our atmosphere before open space begins. The pressure here is so weak that gas molecules escape and head toward faraway stars. So here's how everything works in an ordinary atmosphere. The sun's rays shine on the exosphere, where almost nothing happens. Then they heat the thermosphere and pass through the cold mesosphere. Sunlight cools down while filtering through the ozone layer in the stratosphere. After that, its rays pass through the heaviest and densest layer of the troposphere and reaches the ground. And now, let's see how all this would work in an inverted atmosphere. The troposphere, with all the clouds, water, and oxygen, would rise to the top. The sun's rays would burn all the moisture. Clouds would disappear from the sky. Then the sun's rays would cool slightly while passing through the ozone layer. The stratosphere would absorb all the radiation. Then the rays would pass through the cold mesosphere and quickly reach the surface of our planet. The thermosphere and exosphere would have almost no effect on the beams. If our planet had an inverted atmosphere, a massive drought would begin. All the rain clouds would get dispersed in the top layers of the atmosphere and all the moisture on Earth would start to evaporate and accumulate in the exosphere and thermosphere. Thus, we will get a new troposphere. It would be filled with gases, water particles, and dust. The previous troposphere, which would now be at the very top, would lose its weight and turn into an exosphere. But what would happen to oxygen at this moment? The higher we go, the lower the pressure and the less oxygen. But in the inverted atmosphere, 
there would be less oxygen and less pressure closest to the surface of the Earth. At first, people would feel as if they were on Mount Everest. Many would lose consciousness or experience severe dizziness. Others would have bad migraines and feel unwell because of dilated blood vessels. But what would happen to people who spend a lot of time climbing high mountains? They would adapt more easily, and the rest would have to do the same in the inverted atmosphere. And when people felt comfortable in such conditions, they would begin to enjoy the benefits. We would feel less air resistance. It would be like a vacuum in space. Cars would drive faster and use less gasoline. People would create trains moving at the speed of sound. While running, we would be less tired. But at the same time, planes would fly much more slowly since they would have to go through thick layers of air. We wouldn't have rain for long periods of time, and it would always be sunny. Instead of bad weather, we would face jet streams. Now these powerful icy winds circulate in the upper layers of the atmosphere. They blow over the top of Mount Everest and pose a serious danger to climbers. When the sun's rays heat the air, it rises and encounters cold winds. They push warm air even higher, where it turns into jet streams. These winds are howling at 70 miles per hour. They can easily rip out a tree or tear off some roofs. We would have to build sturdy houses and shelters to survive this calamity. But in the end, the surface of Earth would warm up and push jet streams up. In other words, even if the atmosphere turned upside down, everything would return to its place sooner or later. Perhaps this would happen in a couple of hundred years or millions of years. In any case, the laws of physics and nature would return our planet to its former state. But all living creatures may not live long enough to see it. But what if the planet's atmosphere was constantly flipping over? This is unlikely to happen on Earth, but one space object in the solar system has an inverted atmosphere. All the solid parts in it evaporate and rise, and the atmosphere sinks and becomes denser. Thus, the ground and the sky on this space body keep switching up. This strange celestial object is Pluto. They used to be a planet. The average distance between Pluto and the Sun is about 3.7 billion miles. It also has an elliptical or oval-shaped orbit, which is also tilted away from the orbits of the other planets. When Pluto comes closer to the Sun, it receives a bit of heat. And this heat is enough to turn the ice on Pluto's surface into gas. The higher this gas rises, the warmer it becomes. This is quite strange because everything happens the other way around on Earth. The higher the air, the colder it is. Now, imagine a world that has no solid surface, but only an atmosphere. This is Jupiter the largest planet in our system that consists of gases. 90% is hydrogen, and the remaining 10% mostly consists of helium. Jupiter keeps all these gases inside itself thanks to its powerful gravitation. And the closer to the center, the greater their concentration. If a huge spaceship tried to land on Jupiter's surface, it would take a long time to reach the planet's core. But at the same time, it would be impossible to get to the center since the weight of the surrounding gases would crush any material object. Saturn has a similar structure. The gravity of its gases is so strong that it makes the rings, consisting of pieces of comets and asteroids, spin around the planet. This atmospheric blanket of air on our planet is ideal for all living creatures. For millions of years, evolution has been creating organisms that can adapt to the conditions of the atmosphere. Hey, good thing, huh? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.